Welcome everyone. My name is Catherine Hill Ritchie and I'm an active ACG member since 2016. I'm head of the ACG New York Family Office Committee and I'm also on the ACG New York board. But I do have a day job and I work for the Nottingham Spark Family Office. The past few months, the world has just turned upside down with COVID-19, deaths, job loss, volatile stock market, and then the tragic death of George Floyd, people are sad and depressed and frustrated and worried. We wanted to use this time to highlight family offices and their executives that are using their network and capital and energy for good. Today, we have Sasha Bernier, and he's going to tell us about the initiatives that he's working on. Sasha, please introduce yourself. Great. Thank you, Catherine. I'm excited to be here. Um, as Catherine is saying, my name is Sasha Bernier. I am a principal of a family office known as Cheltenham Enterprises. Um, scary enough, I've been here um, almost uh, 10 years. Uh, prior to that, I worked for a, a, a hedge fund. Um, I was an analyst uh, covering both credit and the activist space. Um, I went to law school, University of Pennsylvania, um, but I never practiced. Um, and today it's just been a very difficult um, environment to invest in. Um, as you can see today, the, the, the market is reacting to the fact that uh, COVID numbers uh, might be coming back. Um, and it's been very hard to get visibility. Um, our goal is to um, preserve capital um, and look for, the, for ideas where we think that uh, long-term um, it won't get affected by the effects of effects of COVID. You might ask, what is that? Um, it's I know it's hard to, to say, but we tend to stick to um, things with hard assets, uh, whether it's a, um, a real estate play. Uh, we, we like we, we always like apartments because people will always need a, a, a place uh, to, to live. And we're looking for um, technologies that we think that we can continue to uh, innovate and disrupt and that people uh, will have uh, uh, uses for. Similar to it, a lot of the stuff that you guys do, uh, Catherine. And so it's, it's a very volatile market, but um, what I can say is uh, we are um, we still believe in the spirit of, of, of the people in, in, in uh, New York State and in our country. I constantly meet great people who are uh, doing amazing things, both um, as entrepreneurs and the people or guests that we have today um, who are constantly giving back to our communities. That's wonderful. Thanks for that intro. You're based in New York City, as I think we can see behind you there. Uh, could you tell us what you personally saw and found out from your network, but also your family that troubled you uh, during the, well, the beginning of the COVID crisis through to today? Yeah, I mean, it's still hard to believe that it, it was a couple of months ago when um, we didn't really know what the effects of COVID uh, would be. But New York City, as you know, Catherine, was hit really, really hard. And really in mid-March, the beginning of April, was probably one of the more scarier moments outside of 9-11 that I can remember in New York. And I think the biggest thing was, a couple of things that hit me hard, was a, um, one of my good friends um, called me because um, a doctor at Mount Sinai um, was saying that he was short of masks and had um, people in his hospital that were basically dying that were in the front lines because they had no fat mask or PPE. And he had reached out to me because I spent a significant amount of my time also in Asia, um, where we um, work with a lot of uh, factories and distribution lines. And I did some work um, with it and started trying to figure out how can we get masks um, into the US to help uh, uh, um, the people in the front lines. And um, furthermore, um, my, my, my mother um, is, a, is a, uh, a doctor um, at the VA hospital. And uh, she was uh, also telling me the same thing, that uh, there were a lack of masks, uh, a, a lack of, of, of isolation gowns. Her and her whole um, um, uh, uh, re uh, residents um, got COVID because they didn't have isolation gowns and masks. Wow. And when you were seeing on television the stories of people using um, garbage bags and sponges and things like that for protection, I, I knew something had to be done. And so... Um, I used, uh, I'm also, I'm, I'm a, um, a, a, a co-head of a group of family office uh, CIOs where we tend to invest together. And uh, we, we had a discussion that we had to do something because this is important that um, that we step up with our, our resources and and the fact that we, 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 we've been privileged and honored to be in a position that we are. So I started doing research and started trying to figure out what can, what can I, what, what can I do to, to help the community? And the first thing 
um, two things that were really amazing for me was I was introduced um, through another family office to, to Heather Bennett, who works in an organization called Direct Relief that um, she can talk more about, but globally helps people um, with uh, uh, um, uh, medical resources. And uh, she was really on the front lines working with hospitals throughout the, 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 the U.S. And um, uh, she helped me with um, uh, Mount Sinai, a hospital here in New York that was had a complete shortage of masks. We had a call with one of the doctors who was basically broken down saying, look, I literally have uh, uh, my nurse is dying because we don't have any masks. And um, um, Heather and I, we were wor literally working, um, um, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning trying to coordinate these things. And um, uh, I'll let her talk more about what she did for uh, uh, the, the hospital at Mount Sinai. And, um, a, and a really great other story is really the, 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 the spirit of entrepreneurs. I, I love the stories of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs step up and realize that they can be effective uh, Caroline, who is a, um, in the fashion industry, uh, a graduate of FIT, decided to, uh, to use her resources to basically use designers around New York to make masks um, with the materials and those uh, as property propylene and really do it herself and do, use a grassroots effort to help the people in the community. And um, we were able to get a bunch of family offices to donate material to, to them so they could give the the necessary tools to the uh, to to the front line. So we'd love to introduce Heather and Caroline because they were really instrumental in doing a lot. So uh, I guess Heather, do you, you should love to for you to introduce. Yeah, thank you, Sasha, and, and thank you for having me on today. Um, so Direct Relief, uh, just for a little bit of background, uh, we're a humanitarian organization. We're based in Santa Barbara, California. And what we do on an ongoing basis is deliver medicines and medical resources to hospitals and clinics in about 100 countries and in all 50 U.S. states. And when COVID hit China in January, um, we said we began sending PPE, which is masks and gowns and gloves, over to Wuhan United Hospital um, over in China, um, hoping to curb the spread before um, kind of COVID went global. Unfortunately, you know, starting in, in February and March, it hit Seattle, it hit New York really hard. And uh, we were in a very fortunate position because we maintain an inventory of medicines and supplies. So when I got the call from Sasha saying, you know, Mount Sinai is in, in critical need. I know people there. Here's the situation on the ground. It was, it was heartbreaking um, to hear that, you know, in our country that this was happening at very prestigious hospitals. Um, and this was... This was not an isolated case. This was happening all over the country, particularly in New York um, in that time. And so working closely with Sasha and his team, I mean, I've never seen the, the dedicated passion that I saw uh, working with Sasha to try to get these critical supplies to the people who need them most. So as he said, we were able to talk to some doctors in Mount Sinai and, and Direct Relief was in a position to mobilize those resources and send some masks and gowns and, and gloves um, in order to help, help those people who are really on the front lines, risking their lives to save other people. Um, and it was such um, just I think the the networking, the community that I saw led by Sasha was so inspirational. And we were honored to be a part of it and just try to help as, as many people as we could. Um, so, you know, I, I want to say thank you. I know this is a really trying time and, and people are very anxious and sad and it's scary, but there's there's light there. There's a lot of people who are impassioned and doing the right thing. And there's a lot of great, uh, just kind of great heart out there. Um, so I, I have a lot of optimism. And I think uh, working with Sasha and his team was one of the first bouts of optimism that I saw. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for what you've been doing to, to help doctors um, get the get the things that they need in this really challenging time. But I, I also thank you, Heather. But I also want to add one great thing, Catherine, is that Direct Relief has the name Direct is really means direct. They have relationships on the ground with the hospital, and they were able to get the PPE in really in a matter of like forty eight hours. And I can't wow. stress the 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 criticalness of her ability to send. Um, thousands of masks to these hospitals when New York was in dire need. And so I think um, what, what Heather and, and her organization did was just amazing. And so I was really blessed to have met that group. 
And um, I, I, I want to say something to uh, before we go to Caroline. Caroline was amazing too. Uh, my, my, unfortunately, my mother ended up getting COVID. Um, she survived it because she didn't um, have again PPE. Um, and Caroline was her group really focused on um, helping get masks to various hospitals. So Caroline, you said well, it. You should tell Catherine your story too. Oh, okay. Um, so. Uh... When Sasha said, mentioned before that this was a grassroots effort, um, it really was. I, uh, I am an adjunct professor at FIT and I'm also a designer uh, and I also am an alumni of FIT. So that was kind of one of the first places I went to um, within the FIT community to see how we could help. And, and um there were, there were a group of us that were trying to get a pattern out there for masks. Uh, and I had originally seen some coverage in the Midwest. This was before it really hit New York hard. Um, I had seen some coverage in the Midwest about how people were starting to make masks to donate because they didn't have enough. And I had seen that with one of my very good friends, uh, Karen Sabag, who's a, another designer. And we were watching this coverage and, and saying to each other, I think this is really going to affect New York. We, we need to do something about it. What should we do? And I immediately started. This was in um, early, like early to mid-March. And I immediately started doing research on fabrics because you, you, can, you can make a mask basically out of anything, but it's important to know what fabrics to use. Um, and which ones will be the most effective. And there were some really great, um, there were some really great research about what fabrics to use. We were able to source some with the help of Sasha, actually. He was able to get us uh, some fabric donations very early. Uh, and once we started getting volunteers and we reached out to everybody, we reached out on social media, we reached out uh, and it became a statewide effort, and it's it's called So for Lives. Actually, we just started out as two people, and it became a statewide effort of all the, these volunteers that wanted to help, and they wanted to help not just in New York but in their communities as well. Um, I think to date we have donated almost twenty thousand masks, which is really amazing, uh, and we were able to get a lot of fabric and uh, yardage from and elastic from Sasha's donation very early on with those um, families that he had contacted to donate directly to us, which was incredible because we were able to distribute that to various volunteers who wanted to help, but maybe didn't have access to fabric or weren't using the right fabrics. Um, so that was really, really great. Another thing that was amazing was Sasha mentioned about directly sending PPE. So, when I had started, and this started out through FIT, but FIT um, realized, you know, within within maybe the first donation that this this wasn't something they could handle necessarily, and they just wanted to provide their support to us and then have us lead the way. So that's what we ended up doing. But we we started out donating to the government to um, through the government. And those masks were really not distributed immediately. It took weeks, maybe even over a month for those masks to get distributed. We saw pictures of them floating around like months later. So with Sasha, he had direct contacts to people who really needed them uh, and doctors who needed them for their nurses, as he mentioned, um, that nurses were dying, which is incredibly, you know, like heartbreaking to hear about. And so... The fact that we were able to make these and know that we were distributing them directly to someone where they would be able to help immediately was really incredible. Um, that was that was really an incredible start of what's now become, you know, what we're doing. But Catherine, I think just just to see again, both Heather, you know, taking ownership and saying, OK, we got to do something immediately was really inspiring and to see Caroline again to see just to see the spirit of you know we we, we tend to give um a, a lot of credence to entrepreneurs who start businesses but for those who say okay I'm, they were doing these out, out of their own pocket so for lives like these were designers that a lot of them had lost their jobs right who's told themselves you know we're going to use our our savings right um and not knowing what the future holds, not knowing if we're going to get jobs, 
and to decide that you're just going to give back and, you know, with money that you could use really to, to survive and pay rent or buy food. And it, it, I, I thought Caroline's group was, 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 was amazing. It was like, wow, I was really inspiring to, 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 to see what So For Lives was, was doing. And, and Caroline, it's like, how many uh, sewers do you have now across the, the country? Um, so we had, we had about a hundred. It's, it's, uh, you know, there's, it's very inspiring to see, as Sasha mentioned, we really, like, I couldn't work, I couldn't teach anymore, I couldn't um, really design, we can't photograph any designs because we can't, you know, there's no interaction, and, and in fashion design especially, it, there's so much contact, um, so, so many people were really, like, not able to do anything, and from the time like COVID-19 started, it's just been a blur because all we've done, it's probably the hardest work I've ever done in my life, just like sitting at a machine sewing factory style um, and coordinating with, with uh, you know, a hundred or so volunteers statewide. And you have some people that drop out, people get burnt out. I mean, you look at any kind of movement that's going on, it, you can get very tired if you don't take a break. So we've had volunteers stay on. We've had some of them um, drop out, but a lot of them have become like a community, which is really amazing. Um, and they know that there's still a need. Like there's, even though it's funny because I've had people tell me this week, they feel like quarantine's over. Um, and some, you walk around New York City, right? Or wherever you guys are, and you see some people wearing masks and some people not wearing masks. Um, but there's people that cannot open their businesses, even nonprofit organizations that we're working with. Um, like one of them is a Lower East Side opioid center, uh, crisis center, and they can't open up without our help, without us being able to make these masks. So there's still a lot of people um, that really need help in making these so they can reopen safely and they can, you know, start progressing safely. Well, I think what is fantastic in both of these examples is how you know we can't just sit back and hide and rely upon our governments to do these things. You've got individuals and entrepreneurs and nonprofits who are really stepping in and you know it's in the Heather, it's in the name of your organization direct, but also Caroline, you guys directly helped cut out the middleman and got the materials that needed to be gotten to the right people without delay and and then still providing those services today. So it, it's a matter of people coming together, using their resources, uh, their capital or their talents uh, to help others. And, and that's really the spirit of it and, and what we want to hear about. And we want to make sure that after this broadcast, um, if anyone would like to support either of your efforts or organizations, um, that they'll be able to get in touch with you. Sasha and I can help uh, connect you as well. Uh, but uh, it's really important that we hear these stories. And, and uh, there are people sitting at home who would love to help somehow. And now they've heard two good stories of, of ways they can help. So just to wrap it up, I've got one more question for you, Sasha, which is, Really, how do you think the current climate will impact and evolve the investment strategies for family offices? You know, th that's a good question, Catherine. We, we were having a discussion earlier with the team. I think it's really the, the difference between now and 2008 was that now it's really hard to get visibility, right? One day the market's up a thousand points, the next day it's down another thousand points, right? Um, and the Fed just keeps pumping money into the system, right? That really makes it difficult because a lot of the price it, price inflation is artificial, right? So how do you invest around that? It's hard to know because, as you saw it again today, the numbers, the COVID numbers, were really high, right? Um, we were saying, thinking, okay, a second wave would come in in the the, the winter, but it's, it looks like it's actually coming now. So how do you, in in any investment, you want to have at least some sense of visibility? With this, you don't really have it. So I think right now um, the focus is to, to to find things that have strong balance sheets um, that can weather I think um, um, uh, the storm for at least a couple of years until we get a vaccine um, and to get and you have to be a long term investor because you'll go crazy if you're if you're trading every day you're going to go crazy so the, the the most important thing is be long term 
um, be willing to, to ride the volatility and make sure that whatever you're investing in has a strong enough balance sheet. And that's what we're focused on right now. We're not trying to hit home runs. Our goal is preserve cash. And when the opportunities come, we'll, we'll uh, get into those investments. And then on the, on the, on when we're looking at companies or things on the VC side, um, ability to um, uh, uh, adapt to the environment um, where you don't necessarily need to be, for instance, in a physical uh, location, um, things that feed into the new environment, um, things that will sort of you know, think about real estate feed into the Amazon effect, whether you're looking at it in things like industrial and, uh, and, 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 and uh, um, uh, be able to, to, to manage your expectations. So it's really having a theory and understanding um, how to navigate ar around that. Well, uh, yeah, Sasha, thank you for your leadership within the family office community and your comments today. And thank you for introducing us to Heather and Caroline. And to both of you, we hope we can uh, support your organizations so you can continue to the great, great, doing the great work that you're doing. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, connecting you with any of our members uh, who'd like to get involved. So thanks again, everyone. We really appreciate your contribution today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.